So, uh, our first speaker is Zoha Beibin uh, from Kaltua. So, he will introduce us with the um, 10 years of open source innovations at Kaltua in online streaming. Thank you. Back to you, Zoha. Uh, so, my name is Zohar Bavin. I work at Kaltura, um, an open source video platform. Uh, and ever since 2006, we basically looked at the world of online video and said there needs to be something for video at large scale. Um, what we'll do today is basically kind of go through a 10 year brief history lesson, if you will. Uh, but then through that, we'll talk about you know, what Caltra is and, and what we've done so far. And uh, we'll finish with a, a look into the future and what we're working on and what we uh, uh, would love your help with. Um, so 10 years in under 10 minutes. Um, so interestingly, those should be check marks. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, is it working? Good. Um, our story begins in, uh, in 2006, um, where basically YouTube did sort of a transformation in how the world sees video and how people behave uh, online. Uh, the world basically shifted from uh, text to uh, video in merely a year. Uh, basically, YouTube launched, YouTube reached millions, every schmo is now, um, you know, an idiot with a camera can be a, 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 a VIP, um, and suddenly everybody cares about video, and bam, Google buys them for about $3 billion. Um, so what's interesting is, you know, what we, what we started seeing is video is mostly, video online is mostly driven by user generated content and by advertisers. Um, this is where the majority of, of uh, uh, video um, online kind of existed. Um, it wasn't just YouTube, but it was mostly YouTube. And that's what, that was basically the premise of Caltra. So there's some numbers here, but it, some interesting kind of evolution of online video, but then um, where Kaltura was launched was at the infliction point of um, videos becoming a standard. And as video is becoming a standard, there's also a standard in technology for video. Um, so the video element is being proposed uh, in 2007. Kaltura.com collaborative video editing is launched. And basically the premise was um, there's YouTube, there's Wikipedia, but there's nothing that does both. Um, so you can upload video, you can share video, but you can't really collaborate on video. You can't really edit video together. Um, you, you can't work with people on video online. Um, and, and the premise was there, there's a huge opportunity here uh, because lots of people are going to use video in the future. It's gonna be the, the dominating kind of data asset, the way that we communicate online. Um, and, and we need a, a the capabilities to actually handle this at scale. Um, so 2008 started um, alongside uh, proposing the video element by uh, Oprah back then. Um, what was interesting is it didn't really catch on. So the first browser came in, they said, here's the video suggestion. This is how we see video online. This is the suggestion for HTML5 video. Nobody really cared. Nobody really went ahead and implemented it. There wasn't really a standard uh, uh, around it, um, and, and it, there was not enough driving force. So we went ahead and actually launched together with Mozilla and the Creative Commons and Yale and a bunch of others, an organization called the Open Video Alliance. The Open Video Alliance uh, had a few conferences, the Open Video Conference, and the goal was to basically bring everybody together in one room to talk about the future of video, to create open standards around video. Um, Alongside, we grew as a platform. We grew as a kind of a, a place where people collaborate and place where people create video together. We did all sorts of interesting projects uh, together with Mozilla, together with uh, a lot of different creators uh, online that basically went ahead and created documentaries where lots of people around the world could actually upload video and collaborate online. We've actually built this uh, video editor online and so on. Um, <clears throat> and the year ends with uh, 2009, so uh, started, we started seeing video uh, being adopted in other places, not just online, uh, in, in the public sense, not just the UGC slash advertising environment, uh, but also in education. So the, the 
evo the evolution is now a revolution in certain industries and in, and in the world of education, we're actually starting to see revolution of education just because of video. Right. Remote learning is now a thing. Flipped classroom is now important. Uh, professors are, star are actually starting to take their classes online. Um, and MOOCs are actually starting to get uh, to be born. Um, another interesting thing is uh, the outcome of those, uh, those collaborations uh, uh, with Mozilla and companies like that, um, and, and this is actually clickable. You can, after that, if you want to kind of go through the presentation and actually see the videos that you can click on um, of, of people. This is uh, Mark uh, from the uh, uh, Mozilla Foundation talking about the, op uh, the Open Video Alliance and why it's, it's important. Um, anyway, the outcome was uh, adoption begins. Browsers are actually now care and they're starting to implement video uh, natively. Flash is now being treated as a fallback, not as the main uh, tool. So um, 2009 continues, uh, starting 2010, what we're starting to see is uh, video is, is getting more important. It, it's getting more embedded. It's getting more native in different sorts of applications. Um, and the more video you create, the more metadata you need to produce out of it, uh, the more complicated the workflows become. Um, it's not just about uploading video from a user device, it's about uploading video from mobile devices, it's about uh, ingesting and scheduling a video from multiple different places, multiple different solutions. Like here we have sort of a lecture capture box that the guys at Fosdem built. Um, so there's, there's a myriad of, of sources of how we ingest content. Fast forward for today, we actually have lots of different uh, video sources, including dashcam uh, that policemen wears, for example. Um, alongside that, there's also lots of uh, sources for metadata. So how do you produce metadata from that video, but also uh, the metadata that correlates to that video? Where was the video taken? Who took the video? In what context the video was taken? Um, were there IoT sensors around that video that correlate to what that video is showing? Um, and so on and so forth. So uh, now it becomes sort of a challenge of managing lots and lots of data. Um, and it's, it's a complicated data because oftentimes you can't really extract the information easily. And it becomes a big data problem. It becomes a, a complex problem of how you deal with multiple different types of metadata. Um, unstructured mostly. Um, and, and lastly, what was interesting is we're starting to see a blurring of the lines between VOD and live. So it's no longer just you upload a video, it's also now I'm broadcasting a video. Or I'm broadcasting a video that the source is actually a, a, an on-demand video that I have on my computer and vice versa. So um, the consumers at the end of the day, the users who are using, using an application where video is uh, important, um, they're starting to expect a lot of different capabilities, a lot of different experiences, um, and that complicates things on the back end. This is where Kaltura is born. Um, so back in 2008, it was mostly a website, right? YouTube meets Wikipedia. Let's do a, a collaborative video online. Um, in 2009, we kind of sit back, look at, look at how people use what we've built, and, and go, aha. There might be something here, bigger here. Um, and really the, the, um, the next step forward was to build a platform uh, completely open source that people can use to build their own experiences online. Um, and together with all those assumptions and all those realizations that video is gonna be massive at scale, it's gonna be required in many different workflows and many different applications, people are going to need a platform to handle all those workflows, to handle all those different solutions. Uh, and put them together. And uh, we put together this uh, kind of manifesto of what would the platform look like, what is important, uh, you know, from things like horizontal uh, scalability to uh, the ability to handle uh, things in different um, uh, systems and, and being uh, backward compatible and so on. Um, 2010, um, Steve Jobs takes the floor and says, HTML5 is king, everybody should dump Flash. Uh, Woohoo! That uh, long live HTML5, now we, have, uh, now we have standards. Now people actually do care. Now the web is actually progressing faster and we're starting to see a lot more applications. PopcornJS is born. 
uh, we're starting to see a lot of interactivity on the web alongside video. It's not just video, it's video experiences. Um, we're starting to see a lot of different uh, embedded workflows with video, where video is uh, kind of the main asset. So in education, for example, we're starting to see video being used for assessments. It's now actually counting against your grade as a student. Um, during that year, uh, th those two years, we actually made two uh, main launches, uh, Keltra version 2 and Keltra version 3. Uh, it's now a massive platform uh, capable of handling a uh, very large scale of video. The Internet Act Archive is actually starting to use Keltra 2 alongside Wikipedia. Um, and adoption is, is growing very fast. Uh, 2012 till 2014, we're starting to see massive, massive adoption all over. Many different use cases, many different environments from healthcare to education to surveillance even. Um, and uh, we're, in a lot, of, a lot of those years were around uh, stabilizing the platform, creating all sorts of tools around it, uh, working, uh, working with the community to create all sorts of future-proof uh, 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 workflows so that you'll be able to handle large-scale uh, video in the back end. Um, that year is uh, kind of ending with the release of a real-time packager that we built uh, uh, based on Nginx. So uh, everybody here knows Nginx. Uh, the beauty of it is, is being able to handle massive amounts of connections. Um, and what's interesting, it's, it's very useful for video. Uh, so we wrote a module that basically does real-time packaging of, of video formats, and we'll talk about this later uh, in more detail, but uh, that's the year it was uh, starting to release. So around 2015, we start launching uh, standardized installation packages for Caltra, so uh, launching of RPMs and DEBs, and then uh, furthermore, and we're starting to see significant growth. Those are actual installation numbers uh, over the years, and th that number is kind of hockey sticking right now, and it's really exciting because it really shows that now, uh, you know, back 10 years back when we looked at this world of online video, you know, we, we, we kind of envisioned where video is going to be used massively across many different workflows, um, but we couldn't even, you know, begin to think about the, the size and the scale uh, that this will take. So those, this was like a fast through uh, 10 years. Uh, let's talk about a few notable FOSS projects that we have uh, that you can check out. So uh, first of all, obviously, the, the platform itself. Uh, you can <coughs> install it from the uh, platform packages, so the RPM and DEBs. Uh, we also provide Chef and all sorts of other deployment capabilities. Uh, the source code for the backend, which is mostly PHP, uh, is over here. And then there is the player, which we'll talk about in a bit as well. Um, really what it's all about is handling everything in the world of video from a backend perspective, right? So handling multiple ingest points, handling uh, video at scale in terms of your storage, in terms of your delivery, in terms of your processing, managing transcoding queues, all those, those kind of things. Uh, then there's the Nginx uh, packager that we talked about. So on-the-fly packaging for many different formats, uh, including encryption and DRM, uh, thumbnail capture in real time, clipping in real time, stitching in real time, all sorts of things like subtitles and multi-audio multi tracks um, and so on. Uh, really, I really recommend checking this out. If, if you have a project that requires real-time packaging of video, um, it does both live and VOD today. Um, and it can also handle the mix between them. So we talked before about blurring of the lines. Um, those, t those type of technologies, this is what they do, right? They enable you to kind of treat video as a video. And it doesn't matter if it's live or if it's VOD. If it's, li if it's VOD, it can become live. If it's live, it be can become a VOD. Um, and really, the user shouldn't really care. Uh, MW Embed, a web standard uh, video player. Uh, the reason it's called, by the way, MW Embed is because originally we wrote it for Wikipedia together with the MediaWiki Foundation. So we actually had uh, uh, Calturians working in the Wikipedia offices, embedding video into Wikipedia, uh, and that's how MW Embed was born. Uh, really, the, the goal of it was to kind of create a, a unified standards player uh, that doesn't really care what platform you're running on, what device you're running on. 
it will make sure the video works. Then it grew very, very significantly to hundreds of plugins and customizations. And there are all sorts of things for interactivity or for uh, you know, cue points and so on, all the way to custom, uh, custom looks and skins and so on. And we also have a what you see is what you get sort of uh, player studio where you can go in and kind of change the, how things look like and uh, add your own plugins and so on. And we'll talk a bit about this in, in, uh, in a bit. Um, lastly, there is a, a REST API client generator. So we kind of took a different approach to REST API. Uh, there's a, a blog post here that I highly recommend writing. Um, what's interesting about this, and, and I won't go over the list, but you can go on and, and check also the, uh, there's a link to the GitHub repository inside the blog post, um, is, is really, uh, one of the massive challenges that we had was to deal with massive scale. And at the same time of having horizontal scalability, uh, we had to deal with lots of, ex lots of limitations of enterprises, right? So where people would want to deploy Kaltura in an enterprise environment or an education a university environment where there's lots of, lots of uh, firewall keep, uh, rules and, and complexities, how do you deal with all those things? Uh, and so we had to come up with uh, uh, a REST API that is simple, uh, just like REST, but at the same time circumvents a lot of the uh, a lot of the limitations that normal REST APIs have. And in addition to that, there's also things that are specific to the world of online video, like handling large files, which most REST APIs don't deal with. Uh, Jam is another interesting application. Uh, uh, it's actually a, a PHP module, so. Um, I highly recommend uh, looking into if you guys have uh, PHP applications. This basically runs on the PHP uh, level and uh, helps you do logging very easily and very quickly. So uh, a, a little bit of information about what people do with Kaltura today and, and over the years. Uh, not sure why it hides a few lines here, but this is basically saying healthcare and this is saying government, I think. Um, Really interestingly, so we saw you know thousands of deployments and so on, uh, literally all over the world. We're starting to see it used and, and embedded natively in many different applications, many different environments. Uh, but then this is really interesting: is um, as time goes by, we actually started around here. So in in the early days, the majority of deployments were distribution of video and things like you know advertising and so on. Nowadays, we're starting to see significant growth into areas like telemedicine or uh, healthcare patient videos or uh, all sorts of uh, uh, capabilities around, workflows around uh, places where video was not naturally uh, you know, used a lot. And now it's actually kind of almost transforming an entire industry. Uh, we're starting to see that a lot with compliance and safety in, in construction and so on. Uh, so really interesting. Uh, interesting, uh, Kaltura is not just for video, but it really is, you know, the focus was video and everything around it. So because video is so complex, uh, generally it handles a lot of different assets around that video. So it's sort of an asset management system and people actually use it to manage all sorts of data type um, in, in various uh, si sizes and scales. Uh, all sorts of different uh, companies all over the world from government to uh, media companies and uh, healthcare and so on. Uh, really interesting slide. If you get to go on the presentation, you could actually click on them and see what they do. Uh, where do people deploy? Uh, we're still seeing most of the people deploy on their own environments, but uh, there's a significant growth into public clouds. Um, so this is sort of the distribution that we're seeing today. And it's also sort of an indication of who are the Strong IS players, I guess. Um, so what's next? I really have 50 seconds. So uh, we've spent a lot of time building new developer tools. You can check them out at developer.caltra.com. Uh, lots of interactive recipe system. We're, there's some innovation around the, how you guide people through uh, REST APIs and so on. Uh, native SDKs and new web standards players are actually, we just launched new native SDKs for the player. Uh, for native iOS and Android, we're actually starting to work on a new player. Uh, so uh, kind of getting rid of a lot of the legacy of MediaWiki and the old days. 
uh, real time uh, for two main reasons. One is because the, the lines are completely blurring again between live and VOD and, and real time is definitely a big part of it. Uh, but also because there's a need to support large broadcaster and multi-participant uh, multi experiences. And, and uh, we're actually seeing a lot of demand for that. Uh, machine, uh, so everything around sort of AI um, and the ability to kind of describe the video better and extract information from it, uh, the, the future of VR and uh, all sorts of things around uh, simplicity of deployment, simplicity of, of uh, scaling and monitoring and so on. And definitely if you want to participate, if you want to share your thoughts, uh, let us know. That's my last thing. No, so Caltrain is completely open source. You need to repeat the question. Oh, yeah, sorry. Let, let me make sure that I understood your question. Uh, you asked if the large companies using Caltrain are actually paying for Caltrain. Um, so Caltrain is completely open source. Uh, it's under AGPL. You could just go ahead and install it yourself. And uh, all the logos that you've seen there are actually using it for free completely. Um, but there, we also provide commercial services. And we have a cloud of our own. So a lot, a lot of people don't want to install themselves. They just want to get a service. And they simply buy from uh, our hosted service. Um, and so yes, there's a mix. Other questions? Yeah. I saw you currently doing teaching. Uh, with, uh, and uh, but you, you also said that in the future you're planning to uh, interact with 360 video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. So the question was basically around VR and uh, what what we plan to do around that, around specifically around stitching. So today, what we do in terms of stitching is basically the idea of clipping and stitching, right? So you get a, a long video and you can you know clip out of it or take multiple videos and then stitch them together. Um, but that's not really stitching in the sense of VR, where in VR you would get like a 360 video and flip it or trim it into like multiple quadrants. Um, so, or cubicles and so on. And then uh, in terms of looking into the future, uh, there are, I guess, two things. One is uh, better support for 360, which we already uh, released version one. Version two is gonna include a little bit more support. Uh, in the further future, I guess, in terms of VR specifically, is also about interactivity, the ability to navigate within the video. Uh, the ability to communicate between the servers, so network optimizations and so on. So we'll see about that. This is kind of further along. Other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.